Howdy folks. So I hear some of you want to learn how to play didgeridoo. And you're thinking, how is this chick in the plaid shirt and backwards orange hat going to help you? Well, I do play didgeridoo. And I have the perfect technique to get you going on the road to your didgeridoo playing stardom. Now didgeridoos come in a couple different shapes and sizes. Of course you have the traditional didgeridoo, jokingly I like to call it the farting bedpost. <laughs> if you're a bassoon player you'd understand that better. Or you also have the travel didgeridoo. Now before you can even get into styles and different types of didges there is a whole process of learning how to play the didgeridoo. Now, in order to play didgeridoo, the first thing that I always tell people is don't even worry about the circular breathing thing yet. Just try to get a tone every ditch. Try to keep a continual sound coming out of your instrument for as long as whatever your length of breath is going to be. So, for instance, the didgeridoo, the mouthpiece, travel didge. What you want to do is with this particular instrument, it's not about how much air you can force through, but as a beginner you're going to find that you're going to be expelling a ton of air initially, not having much of a tone at all. Now you don't want your embouchure, and this is the embouchure, what happens with your mouth when you touch the, the mouthpiece with your lips, you do not want a tight tight armor shirt. It's a very, very loose raspberry. So the raspberry I'm looking for is like this. Notice it's not the tight puckered of a trumpet player. So that being said, loose armor shirt, loose raspberry. Take the didge, didgeridoo, can go to three different part, parts of your face, basically, or rather your mouth. The first part, people usually want to put it right here in the middle of their lips. For some people, that works. For me, I don't know, I got big lips or something, they just don't vibrate right. Or, you can put it on the left side of your face, or you can put it on the right side of your face. And then here's the center, which I can't do. So, taking a step back, that breath thing I was telling you about, it's one solid breath, okay? So take a good, deep breath in, and you're going to exhale it into your instrument, and it's going to sound absolutely horrible. Don't worry. It takes time. That's the first step. First step, playing the didge. Now you're thinking, I have made the didgeridoo make a wonderful farting sound that doesn't sound like a dying animal. So the next thing I try to teach people is how to do circular breathing. Now it's the most hilarious and stupid thing you're ever going to see, and when learning didgeridoo I recommend that you lock yourself preferably in a closet, or maybe just hide in your bedroom, because it's going to sound funny. You don't need any uh, criticism at this point. So, okay. So, when you circular breathe, you need to create time for you to draw air down into your lungs. Okay, we got the time part, but where does the whole breathing lungs and mouth thing come in? So, what I do is I tell people to put a bunch of air in their mouth and then push it out like a giant raspberry. I'm sure you've had people walk up to you with your mouth full and they go and everything comes out of your mouth. So that's the same premise. Fill your mouth with as much air as possible. Looking really, really gorgeous here. And then with your fingers. So you notice that with the help of the fingers, you get the idea that there's a little water balloon, a little air balloon in your mouth. And you're only pushing that air out. There's no air coming up from my lungs to help that air come out. It's all just right here in my mouth. 
Okay. So now that you understand that you're pushing a great big ball of air out of your mouth. So that's the time I was talking about earlier. This <laughs> equates into just enough time to take a breath in. Now check this out. While I'm breathing out or pushing out with my cheeks and with my tongue, I'm breathing air in through my nose. All right, here's what it looks like. So right now I have the air I'm pushing out of my mouth. And then while I'm doing that, I'm breathing in. Okay? So one more time. Yeah, looks great. Okay. So here's the next thing I'm going to try. And I wasn't prepared enough to get myself a straw with a bendable neck and a cup of water. You're going to take your straw, your bendy straw, bend the crud out of it to where you blow on it and it has a resistance. Put it into a cup of water. Okay? Then take your mouth and put it on that straw and blow. You'll get a whole bunch of little bubbles at the bottom. Now you also feel you'll have resistance from that kink straw pushing against your mouth. That will give you a chance to understand how circular breathing works. So while you're breathing into that straw, you can practice this. Imaginary straw. Maybe I'll do another episode and show you how to do that, but self-explanatory. Go search for some other YouTube videos. I'm sure somebody will show you how to put a straw in a glass of water. All right, so the finished product, once you get your circular breathing going, is a never-ending didgeridoo solo. All right, let's see if I can do this. Here's the thing. By no means am I an epic professional. I'm still on my journey. I'm still figuring things out. And that's just how it's always going to be. That's how it's going to be for you, too. And uh, I hope that helped you out a little bit with the mysterious inner workings of didgeridoo. All I can say is that I wish I had this video when I was learning. Alright. Until then, remain calm and carry on, kids. Peace.